Uh, good morning, everyone. We're learning about the um, uh, Sukkot, Sukkot and sitting in the Sukkah and keeping the holiday of Sukkot and taking the Lulav and Etrog and the, the, the four types and what exactly this does in the upper worlds and more exactly how this helps to bring Mashiach. Now, the, the main thing of Mashiach is <clears throat> to reveal the truth. To, me, to reveal the truth. The, 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 the way God made the world is that uh, he, he, he created it in such a way that the, the truth is hidden. <clears throat> when Adam <clears throat> was put into the world, his job was supposed to be to reveal the truth in the world, to reveal the truth. And, <clears throat> and the truth is, is that God is creating everything and that God cares about everything. Everything is incredibly uh, real and important and alive and meaningful and blessed. And that the whole world is this amazing gift that we're in. So every moment is <clears throat> filled with responsibility. And uh, we, we, feel, we, we feel that we're amazingly grateful to be created and that we have a responsibility to make the world better. That's what Adam was supposed to have done. So in other words, the world, when God created the world, it was called the world. In Hebrew, the word for world means concealment. Olam is Helen. Same letters, I and Lamed Mem. <clears throat> concealment. So God was, the truth <clears throat> was concealed from everybody. It's pretty hard for us to understand what this means because it was concealed. And there was no example. Like if you, for instance, you want to be a piano player. So you hear somebody else playing piano, that inspires you. But Adam was created, <clears throat> he didn't have anyone to learn from. It was like very difficult to, for him to exactly understand what he was <clears throat> moving toward. You know, like if you have a puzzle, you buy a puzzle in the, in the, in the, in the store, you know, a, a 3,000 piece puzzle. It's like a picture, you know, a picture of, the, of a map of, you know, the universe or something like that. So the, on, on, the cover, on, on the cover of the box, they have a picture of what you're supposed to, have you know a sunset or a moonset or something over the, the Atlantic Ocean and with a big ship or something? You have a, a picture of what you're supposed to be, but Adam, it, it, you can't make a picture of what God is. You can't make a picture of what true reality is. But at least Adam has sort of an idea what it was because God created him directly. So he felt that God created him, and he knew that God was commanding him. So he had a little inkling of what he was supposed to do and what is good and bad. But like the snake said, Adam, uh, when you eat from the tree, you're, you're going to know what's good and bad. In other words, you, you'll be God. You'll decide. You'll, you'll decide what's good and bad. So as soon as Adam ate from the tree, so all of a sudden everything became more con concealed. And he had less gratitude to God and etc. <clears throat> and this is con continued to this very day. So when the Jewish people do the commandments, so this does two things. First of all, it takes away a little bit of the concealment. And also, it activates God. God, God reacts. It's a very basic principle of Hasidut, of course, that is brought from the ideas of Kabbalah, that God reacts to what we do. So when we do a commandment, first of all, it takes away the bad, takes away the bad from the world. And also, it shines a level of God's Pleasure, if you want to call it God's reality, it makes a new world. It makes a new world. So this is especially in it, going to be revealed, and this is going to be revealed. What type of a good world we made? What happened when we did commandments and etc.? That's especially going to be revealed in the days of the Mashiach. A little bit, it's revealed after a person dies; he goes to heaven. But then, when you go to heaven, you can't continue. You can't get inspired to do more because you, you're not doing anything. You're just up there realizing what. What what you accomplished when you did a commandment, but in this world, uh, the, the, the the point is it should be revealed in this world, and that's what's going to be in the Mashiach. Mashiach is going to reveal the whole business. So it says, oh, by means the, the, the holiday of Sukkot, the holiday of Sukkot does it more than any other holiday. Holiday of Sukkot, it really <clears throat> it, it, it gives you a, a, how do you say an example, and also it, it brings about the revelations that are going to be in the days of the Mashiach. And that's what it says, that in the holiday of Sukkot, it says two times, 
in the commandment, the Yom Rishon. It says that that word twice, Biyom Rishon, on the first day. So the first time it says Biyom Rishon, it's a holiday. Don't do any work. And the other one says Biyom Rishon, you should take the lulav and the etrog. <clears throat> so somehow or other, by not doing any work on that day, you merit to this level of Rishon, the first. More than any other holiday. Now, we'll see. And the second time it says Rishon, you also merit to a level of godliness by taking the Lulav and the Etrog. Lulav and Etrog. Okay, so, so in other words, by resting, by not doing work on the first day, uh, the beginning the first day of the holiday of Sukkot, so you, it says the Midrash, you merit to the third temple. Third temple. Which this is, of course, the holiday of Sukkot. You sit in a Sukkah, and the Sukkah is something like the Third Temple, right? We're going to see that it's a little bit more than that. And the next time it says, Biyom Rishon is talking about taking the Lulav and the Etrog. It says, then you merit to the name of the Mashiach. So these are things which are going to be, <clears throat> of course, the, the, in, in, in the, the future redemption. There's going to be the Third Temple. And there's going to be the Mashiach. What is the name of the Mashiach, by the way? The Mashiach, the name of the Mashiach is going to be Menachem. He's going to give us rest. We'll take it. So he'll give us rest. Rest from all the bad things, all the negative things in the world. Menachem. Which happens to be also the name of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Menachem. Because there's other, that's not one of the qualifications of Mashiach, what his name is. The qualifications of Mashiach are listed in Rambam. He has to be in it expert in learning Torah, and he has to uh, try to teach Torah, and he has to be uh, the, the, the adamant in doing all the commandments, and he wants to bring all the Jews to do the commandments, and he has to be, protect Judaism and fight against anything that's, that tries to destroy Judaism, and etc. So anyone you find doing that, that's the Mashiach. But here we have the name of the Mashiach. All right, so again, again. Oh, by the way, I forgot, I forgot. Let's give charity. Let's give charity. The beginning of the day... We should begin the class by giving charity to Shabbat and Tzedakah. The Jewish people will be redeemed by giving charity. So give charity. And to think good things about people, to say good things to people, make people feel good, but especially to do. Give money. <coughs> That's the main charity. And people don't care that much. Poor person, if you talk bad about them and if you think about them, you should, of course, you should. Maybe give money. Give money that covers everything up, right? Covers everything up. You should think good, but... Charity, action, okay. Action speaks louder than words and certainly speaks louder than thought. Okay, here we go, let's see. All right, I'm just trying to, 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 to do a little bit of, a, of a, a resume, a summary of what we learned up to now. <clears throat> so the Rebbe says like this, how does the holiday of Sukkot begin? In the nighttime, you sit in a sukkah. Then in the daytime, you take the lulav and the etrog, called the four types. So each one of these is a commandment, and because it's a commandment, so this evokes a certain level of godliness. In other words, God reacts to what we do in, in a different way. <clears throat> and this is evident, that well, I'm just repeating what the Rebbe said, this is evident from two interesting facts about the sukkah, one about the sukkah, and the other one about the lulav and etrog. Sukkah, the, for the seven days of Sukkot, it becomes holy. And after the holiday of Sukkot, it's not holy at all. It's nothing. Nothing whatsoever. <clears throat> All the other commandments, for instance, the candlesticks, the candelabra that you use for lighting Shabbat candles. And so when you do the commandment, they don't become holy. They're not holy. They're just like a, a, an a appendage, a help called Tashmishe Mitzvah. It's, it's like an an addition to the commandment. It's an, it helps you do the commandment, but it's not a commandment. It's not holy itself. You can't. 
which is not the case by sukkah. By sukkah, when you sit in the sukkah, when you make the sukkah, you sit in the sukkah, it doesn't just become an appendance, uh, an append appendage for the commandment, just helps the commandment. It becomes holy itself. It has like the same holiness as the commandment for those seven days. For those seven days, it becomes holy, unlike any of the other commandments. It, the, all the other commandments, either they remain holy or they remain some sort of the holiness, or they, and it was even after the holiday, or in the time when there's the holiday, they just become like a, a helper for the commandment, but they don't become holy. Which is not the case of sukkah. Sukkah, the sukkah, and especially the schach, the covenant of the sukkah, when there's the holiday, it's holy. And after the holiday, it's not holy at all. Okay. It says the Rebbe, this shows on, uh, because what happens in the sukkah, in the sukkah, it, it covers everything. When you go into the sukkah, there's no differences. Who goes into the sukkah? A smart person, a good person, a bad person. Everyone who goes into the sukkah, he automatically becomes encompassed by the sukkah. This is an aspect of godliness where the, it doesn't know good or bad or right or left or any, any time, no, nothing spiritual, physical, everything is same. That's what's revealed in the sukkah. It says the lulav and etrog, though, they have something that's unique also. What's unique about the lulav and etrog? That before you do the commandment with lulav and etrog, before you do the commandment, these four items, types of vegetation, a lulav, an etrog, a hadas, a rava, all of them show on unity. All of them show on unity. And when you do the commandment, then this unity is brought out in a godly unity. But before you do the commandment, it's already <clears throat> ready to do the commandment, which is not the case of the sukkah. The sukkah is just made from you know, regular boards or walls and regular sticks before the holiday and also after the holiday. But when the holiday goes on in the sukkah, the, the sukkah becomes holy. And the lulav and etrog, lulav and etrog, even before the holiday, it's you can already see signs in it that it's ready for this unity, for this love. The, 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 the lulav grows, all the leaves grow all, all together, and the, 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 the willow tree grows like one big unit, one big unit, and the hadas is as all the leaves cover the, the stem, so it's all covered over, it's all one. <clears throat> so And, the, and the, the etro grows the whole year, it, 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 it benefits from all the different seasons, so all of these show on unity even before you use them. So this is two types of unity of God that's drawn into the world that's going to be in the days of the Mashiach. And that we accomplish now. One type of unity is a unity of godliness, which is above all distinctions, all differences. Spiritual, physical, time, place, everything is one. Oneness of God. Like God, before he creates the world, is revealed here. Because God is creating the world, right? It's the same God before it creates the world as after it creates the world. That's God is revealed. Everything becomes one, which is not the case. The godliness which is revealed in the lulav and the etrog, that's a type of godliness that does not negate differences. It does not negate uh, distinctions between things. That everything remains as it is, but this aspect of God shows, shows that everything in the world really was ready to express the unity of God, each in its own individual way. So the sukkah negates all differences. The world is just one big godly miracle. But lulav and etrog, that shows, and yes, the world is one big miracle, but everything shows it in a different way. In other words, the details remain, and the details are important. Okay, so what's a higher level of godliness? What's a higher level of godliness to be real, real? So, you know, a normal religious person will say, you know, this world is, is, you know, it's a big bluff. And when the oneness of God is revealed, like the sukkah, then we'll see the truth that the world has no importance whatsoever. The main thing is God. God, God that's, what the, that's what the Judaism is, God, right? God is revealed. We'll see how real God is and how wrong we were. 
and etc. So it says it, that's true. That's that's really amazing. You know, we'll see God like they did when they went to see the Holy Temple. Everybody felt God. They felt they were created. I said, but really, the differences, the details, are holy. Why negate them? Why negate them? It says why negate them because they interfere with the oneness of God. It says yes, but there's a level of the essence of God that it reveals that all of the differences in the world, every single human being, every personality, every detail of a person's life, every talents people have, etc. Every human being, every detail of the world is precious to God. And God wants these details. And that's a higher level of God. That comes from the essence of God. In other words, the, the level of godliness which is revealed by the sukkah, this is a level of godliness where the world sort of it interferes with God's oneness. And when the oneness of God shines, then that interference goes away. But the, the essence of God, which is revealed by the lulav and etrog, that shows that the, no, the world doesn't interfere with God. The world wants to reveal God. Every detail wants to reveal God. Every detail is going to be, that's the idea of the raising of the dead, right? Why, why raise the dead? Leave the dead up in heaven and everybody will be happy. What's the problem? Right? <clears throat> you get into the, 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 the kind of raising the dead, there's going to be housing problems. There's going to be traffic jams. There's going to be things. Leave them all up in heaven. What do you need? He says, no, 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 that's not, that's not the way it works. Raising of the dead means every single Jew and everyone who, did good things exactly how it works for the non Jews, I don't know, but it does work. There, there's, there is definitely a raising of the debt for the non Jews, however, it works. And every good deed, every personality, every <clears throat> difference there is in every human being, every uniqueness, oh, and every that, that'll become holy. So, there, here we go. Let's go. I'll be according to this as the actus that the unity of the sukkah is hecher is higher from any divisions between spiritual or physical, was therefore, which therefore, one second, let me do this, I want to make sure one second. Yeah, yeah, okay. Alpia, now according to what we said, that the unity of the sukkah is higher <clears throat> from any distinctions, even between spiritual and physical. It's all one, it's just one big creation of God. The sukkah was therefore, which therefore poiled as it brings holiness also in the physical sukkah, the, 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 <clears throat> the wood of the sukkah, the schach of the sukkah, and the, 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 the covering, that's the schach, and the walls, right? You can, it can bring holiness down into the to lowest places. There's no difference between spiritual and physical. So it can make the physical world spiritual. This vetman, oich verstehen, now we can understand the explanation in <clears throat> the holiness of the holiday of sukkah. Now again, what did it say? <clears throat> it said, by means of not working, it says two times Rishon, right? Two times Rishon. The first Rishon, it says, resting on the holiday. Don't do normal work. And the second Rishon is the Lulav and the Etrog. So it says, now we can understand the holiness from every holiday, Kumt Mitzad, comes from the revelations which shine in that holiday. This, now we have to have a little explanation. One second. Vibal, because we said that the revelation, which is in the sukkah, which the sukkah, why do we sit in the sukkah, by the way? Because when God took the Jews out of Egypt, he surrounded them with these clouds. As Zion and Bechinus Maki, we said that these clouds surrounded the Jews. They didn't get into the details. If so, how can it be if the holiday, the day of Sukkot, in the Sukkah, reveals a level of godliness which is above spiritual, physical, doesn't care about any details. If so, how can it be that this aspect of God brings about in them tug the day from Sukkot, which on its own is just like a regular weekday, right? It's a, Sunday is different from Monday. But it's a regular, it's not holy. How can it make this day holy? If this aspect of God, which is the sukkah, is above 
any distinctions. So then how does it bring godliness into the distinctions? How does it make the day holy? We thought uh, this was a level of godliness which is above time. How can it be revealed in time? It's sort of limiting itself. And we said this aspect of God, of the sukkah, doesn't limit itself. It just encompasses everything. Yeshua, it says the red, we can't tell you how. How can this essence of God, so to speak, contract himself or whatever and make this the, these seven days holy? How can it be? And it makes the schach, the sukkah also holy. Right? The walls of the sukkah, how can it do it? We, I thought this is a level of godliness which is above any differences or distinctions. So maybe we can say the explanation is like this. Vibal, because the revelation, when you sit in a sukkah, Zion and Hecher are higher. Now, again, we have to continue reminding ourselves that the only reason we sit in a sukkah is because God said we have to do it. God said we have to sit in a sukkah. That's why we do it. We don't sit in a sukkah I mean, only because it's our heritage and only because our forefathers did it and only because God took us out of Egypt a long time ago and he surrounded us with clouds and that is our history. And it's glo- that, those are all true. Those things are all true. And those are all reasons we should sit. In fact, when you sit in a sukkah, you have to remember that God took us out of Egypt and surrounded us with clouds. But that happened thousands of years ago. The reason we're sitting in a sukkah is because God is personally commanding me and you right now, each and every person. And when we do what God wants, is this evokes a level of God's pleasure. Nachat ruach, reach nechoach. Okay, but now the question is, is if what we're bringing down is a level of godliness which is above time, it's above everything. So how does it affect time? How does it affect the boards of the sukkah? How does it make it holy? How does it do it? We th- I thought this was a level which is surrounding. Says the Rebbe, the answer is like this. Because the revelation of sukkah, they are higher than any division between spiritual and physical. Therefore, they can bring holiness also in the time of sukkot. For instance, like we, it makes holiness in the physical sukkah. And it makes no distinctions whatsoever. So God can do it, whatever he wants to with it. On Heyos, because as there's man, the time from sukkahs is, the time from sukkah is externally similar to all the other times of the year, right? You sit in a sukkah, you look at your watch, the time still goes by normal, right? There's day, there's night, day is 24 hours. Nidvi the sukkah, not like the physical sukkah, which the schach and the dafanos, the schach actually becomes holy. Was oich gashmis, also physically, it <coughs> is ze makif, it surrounds. Ubefrat also, ubefrat and especially, noch az di asiyas asukkah, darv zayin l'shein mitzvah. When you make a sukkah, it's supposed to be for the name, the sake of the commandment. When you put up the schach, it says, you put up the schach, it has to be for the sake of the commandment. Ideally, as kumt oisa comes out, as in dem vas oich der zman, which the time of Sukkot, vet kodesh, it's holy. And the time of Sukkot is holy. Again, in the midst of Sukkot, you, you have branches on the top. So you have to at least lift them up or something, right? You have to do something to show that you're doing it for the sake of the commandment. Sake of the commandment. So when you do it, then what happens? It comes out that in them was oich desman, the time of Sukkot becomes holy. The holiness of the time is kum tzum oistruk. This expresses itself in the revelation in the physical Sukkot, gilu in the Sukkot. Was zei zainen nit mukba, which is not limited in being spiritual or physical. Nor nachmer vi the zayar pula oif der gashmir sukkah. Even more than it is in the effect of the Sukkot. In other words, when, what did it say? What did it, what did it say in, in the Gomorrah? We have the Gomorrah that we're learning about. Two times it says Rishon in the commandment of Sukkah. One time it says, Beyoma Rishon, you should rest. Right? Don't do any work. Don't turn on lights. Don't. And then it says another time, Beyoma Rishon, take the four types, Lula and Etro. It says the first time is talking about not doing any work. But ostensibly, it's talking about sitting in the sukkah. Says the Rebbe, sitting in the sukkah is holy, but not working on the day is even more holy. Why? Because not working on the day means that time becomes holy. <clears throat> in the sukkah, the physical sukkah that we sit, 
we see that there's a physical thing and the physical thing is holy, but time you can't see, you can't put your hands on it. It remains, so to speak, spiritual. And nevertheless, it becomes holy. So this is an aspect of God which makes not just the physical world holy, but also even the spiritual worlds it makes holy. Time it makes holy. Okay, what's this got to do with the holy temple? We'll see. For became nevertheless, because the holiness in the schach, and in, in the schach is the covering of the sukkah, right? The, the leaves on the top. And the walls, unafilu, even in the time of sukkot, vert oifketan, it is done because of the revelation of the holiday of sukkah. Is nit It's not automatic. There's nothing in the time of the holiday of Sukkot or in the walls of the Sukkah that show before you do the commandment that there's anything holy or unity. So, so the unity and the godliness in Sukkah is sort of like an additional thing to the Sukkah itself. Is mugdar and gedar achtus shalomaylam yeschalkus. This is a unity which is imposed on time and imposed on the walls of the sukkah. Something like what it was on, on Mount Sinai when God gave the Torah. So he revealed himself. But it was almost like there were two things. There was the world and there was God. And God revealed that there's nothing except for him. But who did he reveal it to? To the world. It's the same thing with the sukkah. It's like there's two things. There's the sukkah and, and there's the time of the holiday. And then there's the godliness, which is above, that's revealed into it. You see, is nor was the amshacha, there's drawn down the oneness of God, which is above any sort of division, has no limitations, and therefore it can be drawn in every place. So sukkah, this shows on a level of godliness, which negates all opposites, and because of that, it can be revealed everywhere. But there still remains two things, so to speak. There's the, the world, time and place, and then there's the godliness, which shows the time and place are really not real, they're just creations. Okay, so that's the sukkah, which is not the case, the unity of the four types, the unit, lulav and etrog, the bal, because as their unity, it's not only because of the commandment that you do, and that you draw down godliness from above, but even before you do the commandment, Besides their angerim teva, the nature of these four things, the lulav, the etrog, the nature of them is already unity before you even do the command. In other words, this is a level of, of godliness, of revelation of God that shows that the distinctions, the differences, the details of the world are also important. They're important to God. Not like what it was like in Mount Sinai when God revealed himself. You want to accept it, accept it. You don't want to accept it, don't. This is talking about a level of godliness that every detail in the world wants to accept because it's going to be, in, 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 it's a permeate the differences, the uniqueness in every single detail. As the Puratim, that the details, Zainan bis achtus, nit therefore, not because was in zay ver nimshach, because there's drawn down godliness into them. No nor the pratim, the, the details themselves, they become an expression of this unity. Bring us a royce, it brings a true unity. So what, what would you want to have? How would you want to have a unity? Let's say you're a king, right? You're a king. You become the king of, of uh, Hungary. And you want to be king. Okay, so what type of a king do you want to be? Well, you want to be a king where people listen to what you say. Right? You want to be a king that everybody does what you say. That's the ideal. Right? So it says, well, there's two ways of doing what you say. You do, people do what you say because you say it. Or people do what you say because they want. They want it. You're their king. This is what they always wanted to do from the essence. It says that's the difference between sukkah and lulav and etrog. Sukkah is like a king that commands everyone to do, and they all uniformly do exactly what the king does, like an army. They automatically do. And Lulav and Etro, this is like a family. Everyone is different. Everyone is unique. Everyone participates, all partners. I'll be according to this. Now we can understand the connection between not working on the holiday, in other words, the time of the holiday, to the holy temple. And also the reason why, thus, that we can reach this specifically by means of not working, not doing any 
work, right? Not turning on lights, not driving your car on the holiday, and not by means of the sukkah, right? The sukkah is holy, right? But what brings is going to bring the third temple? The third temple, it says, is resting on the holiday, treating the holiday holy, the holiday holy. Why Why not sitting in the sukkah? That should bring the holy temple, right? So no, no. Sitting in the sukkah is holy, but not as holy as not working on the holiday. Why? The oiftu, the whole idea of the holy temple, and all that, all that. First of all, what's the connection between resting on the holiday and the, the temple? And what's the connection between taking the four types and the name of the Mashiach? The oiftu, the, the result, the result, the, 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 the change which is brought about the, the, when the temple will be built is as their giloy, the revelation from the holy temple, which is called Kisei Kavod Morom Rishon. It's a sentence from Jeremiah. Kisei Kavod Morom Rishon. It, the throne of God, the, the throne of glory, God's glory, is high mirishon from the beginning. Remember, that was the word rishon we learned from? That from this rishon that's mentioned in Sukkot, and that says on the Yom Rishon, you should rest, don't do any work. That Rishon brings the, 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 the third temple, which the, that's called the throne of God. That's the third temple. As Verd Nimshach and pulled also Makom Mikdashenu, the place of the Holy Temple. The Holy Temple is brought about by resting on the holiday. Why? Was their Makom is a Makom from Velt, a place in the world. Chol Mitzaratzma, which on its own is totally mundane. Well, therefore, ver as der Grechen, you can reach this mainly by the Yom Rishon Mikra Kodesh by making time holy. The seven days of Sukkot become holy. You have to treat them specially. Don't do work. Don't light lights. Don't. Was Oich the Anani Kavod was the same thing of the clouds of glory, which that's represented by the Sukkah. They bring not only on the wood of the Sukkah. Also on the time, the time. Now the wood in the sukkah, we see there's a difference. It's around you, but the time, you don't see that's any difference. You impose holiness on the time. Erzalverin regal, the time itself becomes a, a holiday, holy day. Versus shovet, which you rest, you treat it in a special way. Then chol, you stop doing regular things with it. This idea of 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 stopping resting, it's like if you're holding a, uh, let's say, a stone in your hand, right? And you're using it to pound a nail in, and someone comes in and says, what are you doing? He says, I'm pounding this nail and I don't have a hammer. He says, can I see that stone? He says, man, that stone is a genuine sapphire. That thing is worth a million dollars. Really? What's, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to stop. You're going to stop. I'm not going to do regular things with it. I'll protect it, right? I'm going to protect it so that I'm not, not going to scratch it. The same thing when time becomes holy, what happens? You protect it. You stop doing things. That's what happens when the Jews stop doing work. The time becomes, what's the connection between that and the Holy Temple? What's the connection? Why in that do we merit the Holy Temple? We don't do. But Afal Pikein, nevertheless, is Oich the Pu'ula, Oich Makom Mikdashenu, that's the place <clears throat> the Holy Temple, place and time. What happens in Sukkot? The holiday of Sukkot, time becomes holy, and place, the, the Sukkot becomes holy. Nevertheless, this is nor mitzad dem gila. This is only from the revelation from above. That's like the Holy Temple. Kisei kavod morom rishon. The Holy Temple is a place where you go and you feel above time, that everything is holy, but it's something that's imposed on us. The Holy Temple is something, so to speak, from outside. The Holy Temple will draw all the Jews to Israel. It'll make them do something which, how do you say, inspires them, changes them. <coughs> and this will be drawn down into time and place. So making time holy by resting is a higher level of godliness than making place holy by sitting in the sukkah. In fact, the time, that's what makes the, the sukkah holy. And that's the whole idea of the holy temple. The holy temple is a place which has been made holy by something from above. The essence of God 
made this place holy. And it'll make the Jewish people do things, force, force them, which is not the case, what happens with, with the Mashiach. That's going to be the holy temple. That comes by resting on the holiday, by doing something unusual, which is not the case, the name of the Mashiach, which we said the name of the Mashiach is called Menachem. Why? As Ervet bring in, he will bring comfort <clears throat> and, and how do you say, uh, the, the, the <clears throat> comfort and, what's a good word for comfort, and um, a, in other words, no, <clears throat> a, 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 a justification is not a good word. <clears throat> the reward, if you want to call it. <clears throat> the, 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 let me, just one second, what's, there's a good word for it. Uh, re <laughs> Compensation. Oh, 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 there we go. Compensation for the exile. Nechama, right? You go up to somebody and you punch him in the nose, you break the guy's nose, and it's crooked, and, and, and he says, uh, he's going to take you to court. You go to his house and say, listen, I'm sorry, I lost my temper. It was a bad thing to do. I'm sorry I broke your nose. How much is the, I'll pay your, your medical expenses. What are you talking about medical expenses? Your pen punch me so, No, no, no. I meant, I, what I meant is not just medical expenses, physical, also spiritual. Here, take $10 million. $10 million? And yeah, that's the first installment. And then and, and, and next year, I'll give you another $10 million. I'll put it in the bank for you. So, it was worth it. It was worth it to get my nose broken. $20 million, right? <clears throat> now we're in exile, right? P Millions of Jews have been killed in exile. <clears throat> Millions of Jews. In pogroms, the, the, the only one we really remember is, is the Holocaust. But before that, millions and millions of Jews have been killed in the destruction of the first temple by the Babylonians and by the Romans and by the Christians and by the, by the, 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 the Muslims. They killed, who knows how many Jews have been killed? And how many Jews have been maimed? And how many parents have been heartbroken because their children were killed? And how many children were heartbroken because their parents were killed? You want to tell me Mashiach is going to explain all this away? How is he going to explain? He's going to give some sort of a compensation for this? He's going to comfort us? How is it going to be? So it says, yeah, it's, he's going to do it. How, how is he going to do it? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It says, well, just like this guy who got his nose broken and he gave him $20 million, that comforts him, Right? So the Mashiach is going to somehow or other give something that's so incredibly valuable that it'll re it'll compensate for us. But that's not it. He'll take away the pain. He'll make us realize that really what happened was the best thing that could possibly have done. How is he going to do that? This is totally incomprehensible. There is no way in the world that you can explain the pain of even one Jewish person, one Jewish person, you can't, you can't, no way you can explain it. You have all the explanations you want. It's always going to remain a scar, a hole, right? This person's son died, his father died, it's always going to remain. You can get, do whatever you want. So the Mashiach is going to do something new and it's going to compensate and not everyone, everyone will say, oh, I was really glad. I was really glad that that happened. And it says here, you will see, the Rebbe is going to say, Odecha, I am great called Enough to be because you punished me. It's going to say, what is it? 40, this is an Isaiah, right? Isaiah. <clears throat> Which is not the case. The name of the Mashiach, the comforting that the Mashiach is going to bring, the compensation Mashiach is going to bring for the exile. As Ervet Nitno, he's not only is going to draw down revelations of God from above to give us $20 million, whatever, $20 billion, everybody. No. He'll also reveal the inside of why there was an exile, why every detail was really good. We'll be happy. The dead will rise up. We'll say, wow, it's a good thing you died, Uncle Joe. I'm a, I'm a, how this is going to be, I have no idea. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm saying the words. But, and the Rebbe is sure. And if the Rebbe is sure, so I'm sure uh, the Rebbe is always right. But what this is going to be, I have absolutely no idea, but it's going to be. It's going to be something so incredibly good, but the good is going to be, <clears throat> they're going to reveal, it'll be revealed that we are good, that the whole world is good. The Dergals will see how the whole, this terrible exile itself 
was really the best thing that could possibly be. Like it says in, in Isaiah, Odecha, I will be grateful, God, enough to be all the time that you tortured me. Huh? And it was all the details, all the tortures, all the terrible things that happened to the Jews from all the different generations, <clears throat> it'll be explained. That's something like the Lulav and the Etro. And each detail of it really had unity, but it wasn't revealed. It wasn't really holy. And when they put them together, then we realize that the whole unity, the whole idea of the holiness and the uniqueness of each one of these different four types, the Lulav, the Etro, <clears throat> that it, it was really something holy. It expressed in a unique way, the oneness of God. That this will be reached not only by the min, by not only by the joy of the holiday in itself, nor v thus is forbundant, but how it's connected to the doing of the commandments, not just the commandment, the details. Was inyanim is which is oich the inyanim olam that the world in itself. The physical things in the world, the, the world will be a vessel for the unity and the oneness of God. So in other, words, we will, in other words, we will see clearly that every detail of the world is an amazing gift, a precious, <clears throat> incredibly meaningful and blessed gift. And every second of life is an amazing, precious gift and opportunity to... <clears throat> connect and to reveal that everything is really e e eternal. It's godly. To reveal the godliness inside of everything. As it is now, it's concealed. In other words, we will accomplish what Adam was supposed to have accomplished. So in other words, in summary, <clears throat> by means of resting on the holiday, by means of that, we make time holy. But this is an imposed holiness. Godliness is revealed from the outside. And when the holiday stops, it goes away. But by Lulav and Etrog, we reveal that all of these different four types, intrinsically, their uniqueness was in order to do the commandment, in order to reveal godliness. And that's indicating a type of godliness which Mashiach will bring in every detail. That, for instance, is a reason that the Lubavitcher Rebbe told the said this very important science is very important it's very important science is not won't show you what the truth is but science will reveal a lot of details in the mysteries of the world how things work interactions between things and the more details that we know and the more that we know how to utilize them for the good of man is the more godliness we can reveal because godliness is revealed only in the details Essence of godliness. And that's the whole thing. And the world is ready. The world is ready. That's the Lula of an The world is ready for it. So that's what happens when we do the Lula of an We have to realize and remember that we are bringing about, we're making closer this big revelation that's going to be in the, in the, the Mashiach is going to bring. Namely, that we'll see the truth. That everything in the world is an amazing miracle and mystery and gift and a joyous <clears throat> uh, the message, everything is telling us joyous messages from God that we're very lucky. We're very lucky. We're very fortunate. And every second is eternal. And every second we do something good, that second is eternal, never goes away. And we'll see it, we'll feel it with Mashiach now. Okay, now let's do the Yom Yom. <clears throat>